EGFR mutations are present in about 10 to 15 percent of uh, the newly diagnosed non-small cell North American population. If we look at East Asia, specifically at a person of East Asian ethnicity, female, never smoker with adenocarcinoma, the likelihood of having EGFR mutation goes up to 60 to 65 percent. So it's imperative in uh, the modern era of uh, uh, personalized uh, medicine, specifically personalized oncology, that we work up our patients for EGFR. Uh, in my own clinic, I would guesstimate I have at least 60 or 70 patients uh, with EGFR mutation, the vast majority of whom are doing quite well. They're on a variety of uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, what we call TKIs, some of them for several years. In fact, uh, one of my patients who was on one of the original gefitinib trials uh, remains on the agent now going on a decade and a half, so 15, 16 years with metastatic lung cancer to bone. This population does far better than the general non-small cell lung cancer population. Uh, if we look at older studies, on average, their median survival is two and a half to three years. With more modern treatment, I'd venture a guess that we're doing even better than that, uh, that many of these patients are living four, five, six years or longer. Uh, of all of the actionable mutations that exist, EGFR uh, is the most common. It is not the most common mutation, however. KRAS uh, mutations found in 25 to 35 percent of uh, newly diagnosed uh, non-small cell, non-squamous uh, patients. And uh, unfortunately, we don't yet have a, a, a drug or a, a TKI for that group. Uh, KRAS is much more commonly seen in uh, smokers or former smokers, whereas EGFR mutations typically seen in never smokers or remote former smokers. And my rule of thumb uh, regarding the workup for EGFR is to test all patients with adenocarcinoma, regardless of smoking history, and all never smokers or remote former smokers, regardless of histology.